sit back, relax, have a blast, because it's time for the After the Show podcast. All righty. Hello, and welcome to the Thursday KBJ After the Show podcast. Oh, yeah. Almost the weekend. Big stuff. You guys got uh, big plans for this weekend yet? Anything oh, yes. Drop on you? Yes. I'll be uh, stalking Ray- well, Wayne Gretzky tomorrow night. That's right. Yeah. Big stuff. I'll be seeing you guys a little bit on Saturday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to a crawfish boil on wow. Saturday. Okay. Okay. And then I have a big, huge Easter brunch. Oh. That I'm helping to host Ooh. on Sunday. Okay. Complete with an egg hunt. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the Queen and I are trying to put together our Easter plans, trying to figure out if we want to go to Polo or not. Oh. We've been for a little while, but they do a lovely brunch out there. They do. You better bring your wallet. Yeah, that's the only thing is the, the cost of it. We've gone times. I've found that, you know, when you go over there, we, get, we have some friends that, uh, you know, we go hang on the member side man that party oh. gets going off well yeah. that is much cheaper because a lot of times you're a guest of a member <laughs> well yeah well a lot of times what we'll do we'll do the brunch and then we'll kind of go over at the end of the polo and hang there at the, the bar they got over there it's kind of fun but it's i found it's kind of more of a uh you've got like an adult friend couple kind of thing and we would just be the queen myself and canon so and i'm like that's why i don't know so we're we're, we're working it out you got uh, Easter plans, Bird? Anything going on for you this weekend? I can't speak of the holiday of Easter, but I do know that I've got a lot of things going on this weekend. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess I got to put Easter in there. Okay. Yeah. Easter. Yeah. My Easter. dad's in town, so fuck yeah. Let's do some Easter. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Your brunch ticket is. One forty a person, and it looks to be sold. My out. brunch ticket, Kevin's. Oh, okay. Because I thought I was telling my story. Mm. The one forty a person looks to be sold out. You got to go VIP, which is considerably more. Yikes! Yeah. Yikes. We'll probably look for something a little bit more cost effective. We have some KVJ Nationers, the Polo family mm-hmm. that we know, the yeah. Salinas Bentleys. Mm-hmm. Okay. You should uh, ring them up and see if they have any room at their table. They're members. Oh, wow. They're fancy? Okay. Yes. Well, they're mm-hmm. real polo. They're not like fake fancy where you just go over there and you're there for the champagne. Like, they train horses. They are in it. He is uh, a rider, an instructor. Wow, like, okay. Like, they are polo life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tammy, you met her. Yeah, no, Tammy. Um, you've also got the Marlins. It's opening day in Major League Baseball today, and the Pirates are in town at Lone Depot Park. So you'll be able to go to some Marlins baseball. you want to go check that out. That's, That's why I, do. I released our first pitch on our YouTube shorts. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's topical. Go out like there and it. leave a comment. <laughs> okay. Yeah, people were amazed by that. Honestly, though, I will mm-hmm. say in the moment, I didn't think anybody cheered for us. If you listen back to the video, uh-huh. there is there are definitely yeah. some people applauding for us. Yeah, we do. It yeah. wasn't as bad <laughs> no. as I had remembered it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Uh, so many big stories going on. We went uh, a lot off on uh, Diddy today, just kind of talking about that. I'm sure there'll probably be more that'll drop today. That's kind of my thing. Every day, I just I excitedly go to social media and see what kind of new little nuggets have dropped about that uh, sex capade. Those are my favorite nuggets right now. Yeah, there's some good stuff. I forget what celebrity they did this to, but it was every single day. It was almost kind of like they had an outline to go. All right, so Wednesday we're dropping this shit. Then uh, on Thursday we'll drop the J low stuff right they have an outline and i think that's what's going to keep happening with this case i love it yeah it's gonna it's be a just lot. you know you always you hear the, the the breadcrumbs and the question is does it ever materialize into something of substance or is it just a fun fan fodder well when you got stories j-lo's sneaking in guns she lied in her deposition <laughs> yeah that's or she li- no lied to the grand jury that would have been I mean, uh, perjury, perjury. Yeah perjured herself according to some it sounds yeah. like you're a maniac making up a story but this is what we're talking about yeah this we are. is yeah. real yeah. y'all yeah. <laughs> that's that's insane and the thing that's on social media they're, man they're really trying to connect the dots to jay-z he looks like he could be the one who knows they were just saying though that he has avoided the flames because of his intelligence but there are bodies stacked up, and there is a lot of 
things that uh, would take him down should it be rightfully exposed. Uh, apparently, he's a gatekeeper of if you if you're if he don't want you to succeed and he says nope, you're yeah. done. That was part of it. Do yeah. y'all remember when Jay Z and Alicia Keys did Empire State of Mind on the MTV Movie, movie Awards? They were I singing, think so, yeah. And an artist named yeah. Little Mama, Little Mama, came up and she wasn't part of the show. She was an artist, but she was just caught up and feeling it. And she's going on stage and she's mean mugging and she's doing all this stuff. And Jay Z pretty much takes his arm and kind of. Pushes her off the side. Well, I guess he was so pissed off about that that he goes, "You're done." And she had a she had a major album out, she, one album, yeah. and then after that she was done. Wow. And, and when you hear in the interviews, they uh-huh. people say well, it was Jay Z stopped her, blocked wow. her because he was so pissed off. How about that? Yeah. Don't, don't try to go on stage and steal well, his thunder. And, and, and that she would was be on the light, to do that. Yeah, but that would be on the lighter, nicer side of some of the stories they're alluding to. They say a lot of it goes back to Aaliyah. They say, man, if you really get into what happened with Aaliyah, keep in mind, she married R. Kelly at 15, right? Right. And the thing that uh, the videos I was watching, it was talking about Jay-Z and how he did his partner, Damon Dash, because they had, what, Rockefeller Records together, right? Jay-Z massively fucked Damon Dash over. And I think it had to do part of it with Aaliyah, because you had a weird little mix there, because R. Kelly was real tight. Do you remember that R. Kelly and Jay-Z did a song together? It was like Tropical or something like that. Okay. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, so they, Gosh, it's so long ago. They had done a song together. Now, there's a lot of stuff where people, I, I think, are painting it wrong like some people are trying to say you know that was filmed on epstein's island it wasn't because the director said no we filmed that in fort lauderdale so <laughs> you know so you got to kind of try to weed through the, the lies yes, and there's the, a lot of that kind of going on people so you, do create stories yeah. their own narrative that's false and you got to be careful you can't run with the first thing you see but I, I will tell you that there is smoke coming up with the that whole damon dash jay-z r kelly Aaliyah, and the mix they're just saying there is so much stuff there to if unpack you, that. If you go follow 50 Cent, too, he is currently trying to put together this documentary, Did He Do It? <laughs> and so, so. he's on his Instagram right now saying, I will pay cash money because I know for a fact there are videotapes that exist of music executives, artists, powerful people yeah. that were in Diddy's house and I guess Diddy did what Jeffrey Epstein did put cameras everywhere and would record people without their knowledge people doing yeah. unscrupulous things with young individuals in the sexual nature and there's video of it that Diddy kept as blackmail so mm. just, just to kind of keep his power and yeah. his stroke going just to keep his power and to keep it over your head that you can't you, you gotta help diddy in business because diddy has this tape of you with a 15 year old boy uncle luke was talking about he knew at the diddy parties you had to get out he's like i'm not staying i'm not playing and what one person had said is what diddy would do his thing you would have politicians athletes whatever might be there the thing he would do, he would, in a sense, walk them through in a room where he knew illegalities were happening with underage kids. There would be a video of that person in that room with an illegal act with an underage child happening. And then that's where they would pull him aside and say, hey, you want to see the video we have of you? And then that's how they would get him. They said, this is on video and this will be out that you were in this room. All it was was imprinting their face in the presence of the illegal act. And that's wow. how you, you get the power. And that was kind of the plan. And that's why Uncle Luke alludes to that, that people started to know. Don't go to Diddy's, man. That's what he does. He will get you caught up on video with something. You may innocently walk in and be like, hey, and there's just all this stuff happening. And now you are all of a sudden in the presence of so much illegality that to sort it out, it would take your name down. And think about that. Yeah. You know, if you were whatever, and it's like, oh, he's, what are you doing there? What's going on? Why are you in that room? What's you, happening? You walk in and someone's porking a porcupine, and you're just in the picture. Yes. And all of a sudden, right. you're a cuckold to a porcupine porking. Yeah, that was that was the kind of stuff. And that's why people were in the know about Diddy. We're like, you don't go to Diddy's. Do not, because he is trying to get something on you wow. so that he can usher in favors later. Well, even on the level of, let, let's say you are a Justin Bieber, and nothing of that nature happened, but you're Bieber and you're you know on video doing tons of cocaine off a, you know, a prostitute's butt. 
or, right. or titty, and he's got 20. That alone can get you, you know, it's going to cause you some trouble. So mm. even if it wasn't sex stuff, he probably has videos doing all kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. So Man. It, who knows what will wind up coming out. But, uh, you know, to me, it's, it's fascinating when you start thinking of what could be. Well, they say, too, when the cops rushed in to raid both the places, the first thing they did was cut all the camera feeds. So there's really no feeds of them. There's no video of them ransacking the house, looking at everything and all that. They knew where to go. Mm-hmm. They knew exactly the layout of the house. Somebody filled them in on yeah. where the hard drives are that keep all the video footages. And they went and they clipped the line immediately. Because now mm-hmm. Diddy and his sons are trying to say, you manhandled us. You did this. You did that. Mm-hmm. You abused us when yeah. you came in the house. We're going to sue. And they're asking for the video footage. And I guess the cops are like, it doesn't exist. First thing we did was clip the wires. Yeah, that's what I'd heard is there is somebody who was very up on everything that Diddy did that informed the feds because they went and calculated. This is a calculated takedown of Diddy, and it is not just the criminal, but is also the financial. They're trying to take him down, dismember him from all of his business assets and everything. Somebody wants to finish Diddy. Damn. That's what they're saying. Uh (laughs) Maybe it's 50 Cent. I don't know. Maybe it's 50 Cent, but... Whoever is doing this, man, I applaud you because I I think you're stopping a monster. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're from what's come out. If just half of this stuff is true, Diddy's a monster. No boo-hoo for me. No. You said that uh, you actually had a girlfriend that went through this as well, and this was all over the news yesterday, man. Uh, Just young females walking the streets of New York City getting sucker-punched. Several videos have come up on TikTok. This is probably the one that a lot of you saw, this blonde-haired TikTok influencer. You guys, I was literally just walking, and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh, my God. It hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I fell to the ground, and now this giant goose egg is forming, and I'm like, oh, my God. It looks so crazy. Yeah. There's so many videos of this right now, and this yeah. happened to my friend Donna. She was walking through Times Square, going to Rockefeller Center to go look at the tree with her 16-year-old daughter. It was just the two of them. And this guy runs up on Donna, punches her in the head. Now, luckily, she's a tough broad. It did knock her to the ground. She got up and was just like, oh, my gosh, and and went and, you know, filed a police report and all that. But they never caught the guy. And now it's a thing. Like, there Mm -hmm. are so many girls on TikToks with goose eggs on the side of their forehead from a guy just running up on them and punching them. It's always been kind of a thing and a problem. I remember kids would call it the knockout game. And honestly, it turns my stomach when I see it. It's just unreal. I, I, I hate watching yeah. it. I try not to. Sometimes it'll come on my feet, come on my feet. But the idea of randomly going up and punching and sucker, pu- sucker punching somebody really It's disgusting. It really is. And you're a full grown man punching a woman. I love when they arrest these guys. They arrested one of them. They mm-hmm. got this one guy, and apparently he's a public figure. Well, yeah, I or don't tried know. to be a public yeah, figure. He was he's, a, he's running for office, but he never wins. He was a political candidate. He ran for mayor, governor, and city council in the past three years, and he also records rap music under the name Designer Attitude. I don't know that he's anything of any kind of influence or anything to those. He's just a nut job, I think. But he was easy to identify. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, they got him. Bethany Frank was even saying that a man walked up to her in New York City and punched her square in the face. Um, in fact, it was that uh, video that had been posted up, or at least another video from a fashion student, and Bethany Frankel left a comment on that post saying the exact same thing happened to her several months ago while she was taking a video of an Upper West Side bakery. She's deleted that comment since. Maybe she don't want to answer questions about it. Who knows? Maybe she's not telling the truth about <laughs> it. <laughs> no. Storyline for her show. Uh-oh. She tends Uh-oh. to Uh-oh. say a lot. She tends to not tell stuff. the truth. <laughs> She tends to not. Look, I used to be the biggest Bethany Frankel fan. Mm. I loved her. I was so ride or die, Bethany. 
it is flipped for me because I just don't like the person she has changed into. Mm-hmm. Money changed her, y'all. Yeah. Well, it's a crazy thing going on. You know, the, I don't know how much you can ever believe some of the stats that you see from these cities. But New York City was talking about how, you know, murder and all these crime statistics are down. But the one thing that was up was just the random assaults up 10 percent. I think it was. So it, it is kind of a thing. It's, it's a thing. I guess as things are getting better to some extent in some places, cool. the subway and just randomly is if you're a young female walking around by yourself you are a target for whatever reason i don't know if it's just the one guy or multiples that sounds like as many videos as there are there's got to be there's definitely multiples i saw a bunch of them yesterday and i was like what the hell is going on that's a heightened punishment Uh, other than just you know i know physical assault look if you square off with somebody that's one kind of assault if you sucker punch somebody that should be a heightened level i agree it is attempted murder because they're hitting them right in the temple yeah this isn't Again, this is not a new thing. This has been going on for quite a long time. Maybe it's just now happening in Times Square. I think it's escalated because of the crime numbers and it's getting the focus because of the videos. So I, I think it is escalating. I think you're right. And it has been a thing. But, yeah, it's it's more prevalent in the last year for whatever reason. This happened to my friend Donna a year ago. Mm-hmm. So she lived it and went through it a year ago. And I think it's just sped up since then. Yeah. So kind of, I guess, a heads up. Uh, they were kind of going through to just showing all the different weapons that uh, women are carrying now in New York City. Uh, one person was talking about how they always have their hand on their bear spray or whatever it is they have, pepper spray. I would just walk with a steak knife. Yeah. and, and the, <laughs> well, Let's go. Well, the one girl got punched. She said the guy didn't look crazy, didn't look anything, looked like a normal dude. Everybody wow. Was kind of, and I kind of passed him, and he kind of came back around and kaboom. So... That's what's kind of messed up. Because, yeah, if you see somebody like, all right, they've got the devil in their eyes. But he looked normal. Yeah, just looked like a dude. And then he circled back around after she'd passed and kaboom, clocked her. There's some kind of orchestrated thing that's going on, I think. I think okay. that there's some place on the dark web where these men are assembling and planning this. And, and why? Who knows? But... It can't be this many chicks getting hit in the head by different guys, and it's not something that's orchestrated unless there's just that many fucking maniacs. Well, people get on trends. You know, that's the one thing social media has done is it it creates bad trends that people don't have to talk, but they just coordinate through social media, and they're like, hey, they're doing this. Let's do it, too. So that could be a thing, possibly. Getting a lot of interesting comments of people that have that uh, bridge phobia, driving over bridges and what they do. Uh, Some of the comments that uh, we have are, you know, people talking about things that uh, they have done. One person said, I roll the windows down and everybody in the car knows to try to talk to me and distract me. Oh, yeah, it's tough. And, you know, one person said you take the seatbelts off and they say, well, technically you shouldn't because if, you know, the bridge is defective and you have what happens in. Maryland, you need the seatbelt on you because you're going to have a pretty serious impact here coming up. So keep the seatbelt on. The impact will kill you if you don't have the seatbelt on. Uh When you hit your head on the steering wheel. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, but, you know, the crack in the windows, that's fine. But, yeah, it's amazing how many people are dealing with that. And you see stories like that. And so many people said that it was the bridge in Tampa we talked about yesterday in 1980 that as kids, they grew up seeing that. And that gave so many South Floridians bridge phobia. So interesting stories here. Uh, James said, yeah, I've got that uh, fear, too. And it's a lifelong anxiety that I've just had to deal with. He said, my fear includes no matter how many times I've been over any bridge, I have this irrational fear that the bridge is not finished on the other side. I've had this since I was a child. The way I deal with it is just focusing on the reality that a bridge for some reason isn't finished but still allows cars to pass is insane. So he has to do this whole mental gymnastics just to get over the bridge. He said, I deal with it by having the thought to choose to ignore it, but as much as it scares me, I know that the chances of it collapsing or for some reason the bridge isn't finished is irrational. But Well, that's good that you, you, you say that. That's, that's a good technique to do is to remind yourself – it's insane that there's cars on here, but the bridge isn't fit. You have to remind yourself. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you're doing a good job at least coping with it. It sounds like you're still going over bridges. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, in South Florida, that's the thing that is tough, man. There are some bridges 
you just there is no avoiding it. I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of even going up the Singer Island Bridge. That, that's not my favorite right. thing to do. But yeah, again, we, we got a few Roosevelt Bridge and Stewart's kind of terrifying. I've had that since I was a child. Since I was a little kid, just like that email just said. It's, it's since I was a kid, and I know it's irrational, but it's still there. Can you imagine having a bridge phobia and living in the Lower Keys? Oh my gosh! Well, those are flat. Er. Those are. And I lower, think the, yeah. the reason that the Blue Heron Bridge is so intimidating, it just goes so high so quick. It does, and you're, yeah. all of a sudden you're you're right. You're on you're on the road, you're and like, then damn, I'm, I'm I'm up like by the skyscrapers, and then all of a sudden, holy shit, there's the fucking ocean. We're so small. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Jay Bird just crapped his pants again. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, so there's uh, some interesting comments in the uh, thread that we've got that posted up on our Instagram and also on our Facebook page if you want to join that conversation. Um, Nicole talking a little bit more as uh, Suits is out uh, doing some interviewing. I know you guys have been in touch with him. What state did you say he was in, Virginia? He was running all over yesterday, and he was on a train about 10 p.m. headed back to Boston. And where he's going to spend the night tonight and have another interview today. He said all the interviews he's been doing are going well. Okay. He said everybody is really liking him. He's liking the... The the thing he liked the most was the interview with the train company. He interviewed to be a train conductor. And he said one of the best things about it is there's so much growth and money potential. You don't okay. hit a ceiling. Like, there's growth and growth and growth. Mm-hmm. And, and you can make a lot of money driving a train. I had no idea. Yeah, that's awesome. So he was very excited about that and mm-hmm. the money potential. You know, Good. and he's in a bad place. And so when mm-hmm. somebody says, hey, I'm going to triple your salary, he's like, whoa. Right. Yeah. That's that, awesome. He deserves to have some breathing room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can see him. He interviews well. He he's does. A, he's a really well-spoken dude. He's got it together. He's sharp. And mm-hmm. he's a technical guy like that. He wants to be a pilot. So I think train conductor is Right there in line with pilot. Okay. Maybe the pilot dream doesn't have to die. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicole had said that, uh, it's Nicole and Del Rey, she said, I want to chime in on the cost of living in South Florida after catching up on the news of suits and his uh, troubles. So sad to hear that uh, he's going through that. Uh, she said, I'm a renter and I'm lucky enough to have a great job making more money than I ever have in my life right now. But unfortunately, even with my salary, when I look into buying a home in our area, I still find it to be next to impossible or just not worth it for what I can afford. I was watching the news a few nights ago and they mentioned the average income for a single adult to live comfortably in Florida is now ninety four thousand four hundred thirty two dollars per year. I remember back in the day, if you made 100 k in life, you made it, baby. You were set. Yeah. Now you're just barely comfortable. How sad is that? What, do you have to make, like, 200 k a year as a single person just to be able to afford a home? It's just crazy how things have changed in the past few years and so quickly. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, you know, she's right, right. about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty insane how it's changed and just how fast, you know, what you got to make. I saw, too, FAU is having some issues because students come into Boca. Because they don't have the dorm system like a lot of larger universities. And if you're trying to find any kind of off-campus housing, students are like, I can't, you know, I thought school was expensive. Oh, Boca is expensive. Yeah. (laughs) Boca's ridiculous. Think about that. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, they do have some on-campus at FAU, but I think it gets scooped up so fast. Yeah. Like, you have to know somebody or... Yeah. Oh, or what was that? <laughs> know somebody or blow somebody. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it about FAU. Okay. Well, there you go. I, I haven't seen that in the ads. <laughs> I looked into it because I have somebody that I wanted to get to go to school there. And they were like, if you want somebody to go to school there, you better figure out how to apply for on-campus housing way ahead of time because it is limited. Yeah, you have to start registering for to to live at FAU in eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah, probably. It's crazy. I remember when I went there, I mean, jeez, they're begging people to go in those dorms. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, it changed. It's totally changed. Right when I, went, right when I graduated, FAU got so cool. <laughs> right as soon as, yeah. as, soon as I grab my I diploma, did. they go, we're going to put a lot of money in the school. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's booming. It's booming now. 
Uh, Denise said, is there any truth to the rumor that Suits has to leave because that rat bastard Cy Dobbins is coming back to take his job? <laughs> I didn't want to get into it. Uh, uh. And I, I still don't feel comfortable talking about Cy Dobbins without Suits in the room. <laughs> okay. But uh, I can't deny that rumor. Okay. Who knows? There, there could be some truth to it. Damn, Cy Dobbins, he's I, back? Wait for that special. Uh, wait until that comes out, the behind the scenes. I, I didn't say that, but I didn't say that either. What? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, Nikki from Lake Worth Beach said, Virginia, can you talk about what it's like sending your kid off to college? Do you worry every day? Yes. Uh, what surprised you about the process? My kid's going to be off soon. I wonder what it's going to be like. It's weird because there are good and bad things, you know, less laundry in my house to do, less cleaning up to do, less meals to cook, less people in the house is a, a more peaceful home. But, you know, it's lonely, too, because you really do miss this little person. It's weird. You you raise this little person like a like a Fabergé egg. It's so precious and gentle, and you have to be so careful with it. And then all of a sudden, you just let it go, and you're like, okay, bye. Mm-hmm. It's very weird. Yeah, the psychosis of it. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. I'm I'm scratching checks that I don't know how I'm gonna pay for for college stuff. It's it's a lot of money. Well, it is. That's that's the one thing and you know, you're hearing so often is younger kids today coming back living with their parents, not getting off the parents' payroll. You know, we know that. You know, that's it's it's tough. But I'll tell you, that Life 360 app is really great for my peace of mind as a parent because mm-hmm. you can go on there at any given point and see exactly where your kid is now. Mind you, their phone has to be charged. If they've got a dead phone, then you don't know where they are. And it's a struggle keeping on my child to make sure her phone is always charged. And if there's a dead phone, you think you have a dead kid. Exactly. Yeah. But the Life360 app is really amazing, and I, I highly recommend it. If you've got mm. a, even a teenager in high school, you should do it. Yeah. Good for peace of mind. Yes. It tells you where they are. It tells you how fast the car they're traveling in is going. It tells you where they've been. Mm-hmm. It tells you, you know, if they're on foot or if they're in a vehicle. or it just it, It's really great for a stressed out, worrisome mom like myself. Mm. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your little piece of advice. Uh, Jacob's got uh, one for us. He said, I tried to send these to Jaybird on Facebook, but I doubt he got them. The company that I work for just started carrying this hot sauce that is made out of Lake Park. <laughs> I know uh, Jaybird loves to rep his hometown, so I thought he'd be interested. Uh, he should be able to find it in his local Publix. There are three flavors, campfire, hot garlic, and spicy mango. It's the Dad's Campfire Hot Sauce. And it says, since you're not here to make this anymore, I thought I would make this for you. I love you, Dad. Dad's hot sauce on the bottle there. Aww. It's very heartwarming. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to go check this out because uh, we know the creator of this. This is uh, Larry, who oh, does Pirates Well. Nice. Up oh. there in Palm Beach Gardens. And uh, I went up there, and he treated me one day. Uh, we tried this. Uh, and that was his dad's recipe, and he went to Sauce Crafters in Riviera Beach. I you love know, we it. Know the people over there. We love Sauce Crafters. Yes, and they were able to take the recipe he has. So it's <laughs> it legitimately his dad's hot sauce, and he's got the other ones. I went to Dos Tacos in uh, Del Rey Marketplace in West Del Rey uh, a couple weekends ago, and they have it there. So nice. it's starting to expand. In fact, uh, we're hoping to do a deal with uh, Larry and Dad's Campfire where. Uh, he would come in, it would be the official hot sauce we use on the show for the You Suck Shot and whenever we do hot sauce kind of punishments I and love things like it. that. Yeah, we hopefully have Larry's sauce. We should there. tell him That's to awesome. bring it to the Crawfish Fest. We yeah. love hot sauce at the Crawfish mm-hmm. Fest. Yeah. So, Congrats on your sauce. Yay. Yeah. Really cool. So uh, Larry out there doing great stuff. It's a fantastic sauce. It is really good. All three flavors, I've had them all. I got to take fantastic. off, y'all. Where are you going? Uh, I got to pick up my friend Nunya. 
<laughs> Is that to do with your blood work? No, it's going to do with my blood work. Do you have to go do more blood work? I, I don't, no. Mm. Yeah. Are you going back to the doctor's office? I, I'm not, no. Head doctor? No. You no. probably need you, to head You, doctor. though, you really should start sitting down with somebody. Not for Rocco, for, for you. All right, bro, well, you can't leave me with her. i got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We'll see Bird tomorrow. We'll see you all tomorrow as well. Have a good one. Goodbye.